Dr. Julius Gavi, son of Jamaica's first national hero, Marcus Gavi, joins me at the news from New York. Good to have you join us, Dr. Gavi. You to celebrate Africa Day a day, a day late, but um, we were on programs yesterday celebrating, and I'm sure you celebrated yesterday as well. So it's worth at least two days of celebration. Uh, absolutely. It is what, more than two days of, of celebration. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the programs you attended yesterday and some of the comments you make. Uh, you made, you said, perhaps we have not so much of our freedom, but rather we have joined our enemy. Um, <laughs> that would suggest that you think that um, Africa hasn't made any much progress in terms of independence and um, democratization. Well, um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, we have made some progress. But one of our problems is that we have not stood uh, firmly on our own two feet, meaning our own uh, history and our own culture and our own uh, traditional institutions. We have adopted the institutions of our oppressors, which we um, inherited at the time of at the end of colonialism, and which are still in place and are still being enforced by the World Trade Organization, the IMF, and even the, the United Nations. So we're still living in, in a, a, a Eurocentric uh, world instead of an Africa-centric world. I think if you look around the world, the Chinese are living within the paradigm, their own paradigm of Chinese civilization and Chinese history. And, and, and they have adopted uh, their own version of, of uh, economic advancement, etc., such as state capitalism, and, and it's their own um, uh, history that they're living out in terms of how many people they're brought out of, of poverty, what their medical system looks like. For example, look at how they have, they've really mastered uh, COVID, as opposed to what has been still happening in the West. Um, in the United States, we're still, you know, locked down. Much of Europe is locked down, etc., and and in the throes of recession. So I think that each, each group has, has to have its own civilization model. And we have the oldest model going all the way back to Kemet, which people call Egypt and, and, and Nubia, and, and which uh, preceded or predated all other civilizations and gave civilization to the world. So that is our problem in trying to reconstitute that. You, you said we are more um, Eurocentric than we are Afrocentric. People even rarely experience their countries, uh, let alone other countries in Africa. Um, there is little or no regional integration or cultural exchange. How do we make that happen? Does that boil down to leadership? Well, absolutely. It boils down to leadership. In some sense, it's, it starts at the African Union, but it also starts at, at the national level because, you know, the, 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 the leaders within the nations have to support the African Union and move it towards the United States of Africa. So it starts locally. And, um, you know, many areas uh, uh, in Africa, for example, if you take Nigeria itself, it's still divided very much in three, um, which, with three areas are warring against each other to some extent, at least the north warring against the South or the South warring against the North, and you have the Yorubas and you have the Ibas and you have other groups and of course the Hausa and Fulani in the North. So you have that in many different areas, you know, as you know, we went through the genocide in terms of Rwanda, Burundi, we see the problems in the Congo. So um, it, it's still at that national level in terms of people seeing themselves first, um, maybe in terms of, of a local tribe or maybe in terms of a nation, but not primarily as an African. So we still need to have that African identity. I think many of us in the diaspora have been very much uh, detribalized. Some of us have also been denationalized and consider ourselves African. Like for example, I was born in Jamaica, you know, I, I, I went to school um, um, in, in England and Canada. I live in the United States, but I consider myself an, an African living in the United States of America. So one needs to move towards the African identity. That is what we were disconnected from. And, and that is how our civilization in Africa was disrupted. So, so that our own process of Africanization um, was halted. And of course, we had the Berlin Conference where Africa was divided up in 1884, 1885. And those boundaries and, and, and their ties to different European nations, the Francophone area and the Anglophone area, uh, etc., and the Spanish area, and of course, 
Now we have a lot of Arabization, you know, coming from the north and, and the east. So that these different uh, uh, cultures and nationalities and religions have, have um, um, created an imprint, if you will, on, on the African consciousness, on the African mind, and, and uh, on our institutions. And this is what is preventing us from uh, uniting and moving forward we are all, with our own civilization and our model. It's interesting you talked about that in, in terms of boundaries and um, the challenges we have uniting as a continent because there's just little that bring, brings us together except, I mean, even for trade. There is little or no trade between African countries. Um, mm -hmm. Do you sometimes reflect and think back as to, because this is exactly what your father fought for, um, the, that Africa become Afrocentric. Do you sometimes look back and think, oh, we have made pro progress, the, the fight of my father is worth it? Or do you sometimes wonder, um, what exactly are we doing? This is exactly the message he was preaching against. Yes, um, you know, one of the one of the things is that, that you know, we, we have sort of one lifetime and we expect everything to happen within our lifetime. So from the time I, I, I was in my 20s, so to speak, I expected the revolution to be to be around the corner of, of, of the changes, the dramatic changes would happen then, uh, you know, and, and we're in a hurry as young people. As, as you get a little bit older, you move a little bit slower, and then you have a wider perspective. And, you know, you look back, and of course, uh, you know, there have been changes. Right now, we, we have the, the, the African free trade area, which is a, a major change, you know, uh, but also it has to be put in place. It has to be made operational, because I know you still can't move things freely from Nigeria. I know Dan Goti can't move his, his cement ac across different borders, and many African countries would prefer to buy their cement, you know, from China as opposed to other African countries. So there's a lot of work to, to be done. Uh, some progress has been made. As you know, we've made progress from the OAU to the African Union, and, and the African Union has these plans. But again, the African Union is not being properly supported by the different African states. It's being financed to a large extent, you know, uh, uh, by China. But then again, we have to look at, at the subversion that has taken place by the European powers, uh, you know, by, the, the, by France, you know, by the United States, you, you know, uh, by Italy, by Britain, by Belgium, etc. cetera, and, 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 and so many coups um, that have taken place um, um, within Africa. Whenever there's been a national leader that, that has stood up, especially if he's a Pan-African type of person, you know, all the way from the Mumba, you know, uh, forward, that they have been killed. I mean, there have been, been more than 10 leaders killed in the Francophone countries who have said, we, we do not want the paternalism of, of France and, and give us back our, our $500 billion uh, yearly. Uh, you know, we do not want to continue to be colonists of, of France. So, you know, the subversive pressure is still there that is preventing us from moving into our own space and keeping us within the trajectory of our previous uh, uh, colonial uh, 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 powers. And of course, Kwame Nkrumah called this um, uh, neo-colonialism. Now it's globalization and, and, um, and you know, it's reinforced uh, by the, the IMF and the World Bank and, and these international agencies, which, which have all these legal uh, structures, including the World Court of Justice, where the only people who are brought for trial are Africans. When, when, when the greatest uh, uh, terrorists are, are the European uh, uh, countries. So, you know, there is this imbalance and, and we have to, to, to move out of that. Um, but the, the pressure is still great from outside, keeping us um, uh, unbalanced. But we need that leadership, as you just mentioned, that, that will not be, be bought and, and, um. and, and, um, and can defend itself. Uh, we, we, Dr. We, Gavi, we are still um, subject to that kind of pressure. Dr. Gavi, just because I have f just a few seconds left, I just, sure. I just want to um, quickly say this, because you said in the way that Russia drew down its iron cotton and China yeah. drew down its bamboo cotton, we Africans need to draw down our Ubuntu cotton now. And I just want yes. to ra wrap up with that, because I understand that your father's, uh, uh, you, I think a plaque will be unveiled for your father by the African Union. And I hope that as that is done, we are reminded of what he stood for, and then we're able to drop down at Ubuntu cotton. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, it's been it's a been, long, it's been, it's a been my pleasure. One God, one aim, one destiny, one love. 
Absolutely. Dr. Julius Gavi, thanks for talking to us.